Let's see if we can just um, kind of put scripture together, kind of take the end times that we're actually living in right now, and let's take a look at those, and let's put the two together. We have scripture, we have what's actually happening, any news that is new as it relates to Bible prophecy of end times. Before we get started, greetings to all of you, and welcome here. Uh, the website is doing tremendously well, folks. Thank you so very much. The important part is, is that what you can get from me is as I see it, <clears throat> and I'm not really handcuffed in any way. I can say pretty much anything I want in my website because that is something that is separate and different than a YouTube channel. <clears throat> and you probably understand the difference between the two when I say that. So, uh, again, uh, reporting daily. Um, I'm picking up where the churches have left off in my understanding and opinion, and um, let's move on. Uh, for next, uh, always be remembered. This is the way that I see it. You don't have to agree with me to get along with me. If you're pleasant, polite about it, you can disagree, but you don't ever take my word for it because I take you to Scripture, and that's what I mean. You have to decide after I give you the description, the scripture, and then I say my understanding of it. And that's what we're going today. What is actually happening today in Israel is more of a hunt than it is an actual let's go in and do war. Which I found very curious because I mentioned that in the past in my other videos. I said it was a little bit surprising to me that Netanyahu jumped against I'm sorry, before his scheduled time to enter into Rafa, uh, he was supposed to go in on Friday, which is going to be tomorrow, and he started actually Tuesday, which led me to understand there's something going on here. And I just digging deeper, I'm becoming more confirmed in my understanding, and that is, is that they're at a, and for Israel, idea, are hunting to find Sinwar. I'm going to um, explain in this way that I'm seeing it, <clears throat> that it seems pressure is being put on in a specific place within Rafa. It's not all of Rafa, this being the, <clears throat> excuse me, folks, this being the lower part of Gaza Strip, uh, which is the last uh, holdout of Hamas terrorist organization. It appears, and it's my understanding, and what I'm seeing happen is the hunt is for the snake. To cut the head off. Do you remember Saddam Hussein? Finally at the very end he was found and everyone had this big relief when he was finally captured. And, and then they said that was cutting the head off from the snake. Sin war within the Gaza Strip, which is the leader of Hamas there in the Gaza Strip, if they should find him, what would happen? If they were to capture him. But if they find him, he's surrounded by the hostages. But what happens if Israel's going in there right now and kind of disrupting and getting really close to where Sinwar is? Wouldn't that make sense that Israel is basically trying to get to scatter those that are underground in hiding in hopes of being able to separate them enough that maybe one or two hostages might be found? Maybe even, unfortunately, one of the dead bodies or bodies of some of the hostages. A good, clear indication that they're getting close. But yet, Sanwar is going to have to somehow stay hidden. I just find that very interesting. It's a Israel has a specific place where they're headed. And they're looking. And what else would they want to do to finally bring all of this to a position to where they would be able to separate, again, I'm repeating myself, I know that, separate the hostages from where Sinwar is, go in and capture Sinwar, would they then be fulfilling that second scenario of one of two that I gave us, in my understanding, and then that bring about peace and safety. Okay, let's quickly go back over those two scenarios. One of them was really clear that if a, a truce, a peace treaty of some sort, a cease fire were to be enacted would then they be saying peace and safety okay hold on one second where is that found because i want you guys to know that we're talking about thessalonians here and i haven't examined this yet to see if this thing is in focus i should have done that earlier but let's just go ahead and use it anyway 
let me get over to it. Yeah, it's enough in focus, I think. Let me see here. Yeah, this will work. This will work. Let me go over here to here. All right. Thessalonians 1.4. Folks, everything is all about Scripture. No matter how you look at this, we're going to get right here towards the bottom of, uh, of uh, this part of the Scripture right here. But I'd not have you be ignorant, brother. Where's my trusty little pen? Uh, concerning which those that are asleep, those that are dead. Uh, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. So them which are asleep in Jesus, God will, will, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. I just want to get this complete because this is... Paul in Thessalonians, he's speaking of a specific time. Let's just keep right on going. For we which are alive and remain unto, remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So the dead, and now he's talking about the live. What's he talking about? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. That's important to understand. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The rapture, harpazo, same thing. Rapture, dead, harpazo, those are alive, or they are captured, taken up and out of the way of danger. More on that in just a moment. When we are alive and remain, shall be caught up, harpazo, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. What's Paul talking about, folks? Well, let's keep right on going, because again, <clears throat> I'm understanding a lot of people are just missing this. Dismissing and missing it. Okay, but of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write on to you. We've established in our belief, my understanding, anyway, that we are in that time. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, what's he talking about? Folks, the rapture. The day of the Lord, when he returns and puts his feet back on this ground, will be known by everybody seven years prior due to the fulfillment of the prophecy of Daniel of him confirming a covenant for seven weeks which was seven years of the 70 weeks so the last seven so we, it's not about him being hidden when he returns to this earth so what he's talking about here for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night as a thief <laughs> the Lord is not a thief as a thief in other words be taken a lot of people by surprise unless they know all right. For when they shall say peace and safety, and here it is right here. Those were the two legs that I said that could be playing out. The first scenario is they'd be saying peace and safety at the end of some sort of a ceasefire. The next leg that I saw, number two scenario, was the possibility of the uh, war actually being won by Israel. Israel is in great condemnation against everybody all the nations in this world, all the people, we, uh, just all rioting in streets um, throughout the world, um, everyone playing homage to the Palestinians and totally ignoring Israel. Uh, the lack of weapons that is that America is saying that it's threatening Israel with withholding weapons. I blogged on that this morning on my website, so I won't go into that. But the weapons was something important, and I made it to my understanding, that's in the blog. Okay, so when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Okay, then now I'm gonna go grab another piece of scripture right here, and we're gonna go over where we might see this sudden destruction. Psalms Asaph, he's a prophet, and he speaks of a time, and then he's asking God, he's visualizing, he's seeing something, and he's saying, lo, thine enemies make a tumult, Okay, uh, they have raised up their head, the head, have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted, uh, I hope you guys are seeing all that, uh, against the hidden ones, I have determined, thank you to Terry Geyser, she is one that pointed out, Ross, is it possible those could actually be the uh, hostages that are being held in Gaza Strip, and a big, huge light went off. And I said, by absolutely all complete means, and that's my understanding, that's what Asaph saw at this specific time. This is what he's seeing when he says they are taking crafty counsel, the tumults against them, they have saying, cut them, uh, cut them off from being a nation, that they be no more in remembrance. Uh, obviously paraphrasing and going about this quickly here. For they have consulted together with one consent. What are we seeing today? They have confederate against thee. What are we seeing today? There's more of that in my blog also. 
and then it goes on to say the who of it and then it goes on and he says right here do unto them and he gives us an example of the war of the Lord and Gideon in Judges 6 and 7 okay uh, the ruin all the way to the very end we come down here and then here's an action by God okay this is important to understand because I'm gonna go right back and connect that to Paul here in just a second oh my god make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind burning fires wood flame and persecute them with, and, uh, with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name O Heavenly Father Son Jesus Christ our Lord God so they will be seeking him and who will they are going to be confounded and troubled forever right here why you can tell this has never happened before someone tries to say Psalms 83 has already happened it's happened more than once not true because it says right here forever that they will know then that men may know that thou whose name alone let me get down here to the bottom sorry that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah and then, of course, are the most high over all the earth. Here is an action of God. Here is the result of what he does. Go back here again to Thessalonians. When they shall say peace and safety, one of those two legs, Israel's in a hunt today, hopefully to cut the head off the snake, would they be saying peace and safety if he is found And their action today is an attempt to be able to separate the hostages from Sinwar, and that's what's going on with pinpoint accurate munitions, um, let's see, snipers, etc. They're trying to get in, I think, Ross's conjecture here, and separate them, that Sinwar can be found. Sinra being the head will be cut off. When then at the end of that will they be saying peace and safety? Then sudden destruction. And I've tied the sudden destruction to an action of God. Not a war, but an action of God. Definitely, please go see my blog. Because I, it's, I laid it out in very simple terms there. All right, so the peace and safety, one of the two scenarios. Israel wins the war several weeks, months away or the head of the snake is found and separated. And then would they be saying, finally, peace and safety? But we have, um, right, let's go just a little bit further so we can understand also what he's talking about here. Sorry, that's not centered the way it should be. But ye brethren are not in darkness, which means that you folks are not in darkness because you're totally aware that there is a thief round and about, and he's about ready to cause something to happen great. In my blog, my site, my website, I call it an era. We're entering into a new era of time when the sudden destruction comes. Okay, that the day should overtake you as a thief would, in other words, sneaking up on you, etc. Let me go back here again and just get this into focus. Um, so children of the light, and okay, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. That's exactly where we are today. Now, it goes on in scripture <clears throat> let's see if I can get myself back here again it goes on in scripture to explain in many places throughout the Bible the Bible is approximately one-third about prophecies of end times but the one that's specific to us is Zechariah 12 because this sudden destruction is described by Zechariah as to happen in one day that everything will take place to where God will do what he said here in Psalms 83. Um, again, I'm just trying to wrap all this stuff up because, folks, where we are today is, is really vitally important uh, understanding. Just Zechariah 12 right here. And brethren, uh, of the word of the Lord for Israel, okay, which cometh forth from the heavens, Micah 1, 3. God steps out of his place. And Micah thoroughly explains what sounds and mirrors what Asaph is talking about in Psalms 83. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling, all the people round about in siege, uh, both against uh, Judah and Jerusalem. Judah is full of Israeli people <clears throat> and, and here it is in that day the sudden destruction Asa the prophet 
Just link this together and other scripture will fall right into place. I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the people. Where are we today, folks? All the burdens themselves with it shall be cut into pieces. I think America is setting themselves up for a huge fall, along with many other nations. Though all the people of the earth be gathered against it, and in that day, here we go again, that sudden destruction in a day, saith the Lord, I will make, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider with madness, and I will open up mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and smite every horse of the people with blindness. As I'm going to basically start bringing this to an end, because wrap it up, because there's another scenario that can take place, and I have said this before in other videos, but I want to reiterate it again right now. Go back over it. The other scenario is, is that as Israel is about ready to find Sanhar, and Iran sees an end to its proxy power of Hamas, it may decide to try to break out in a war against Israel using its proxy Hezbollah up north. Now just think this through, if they did that. Now, at the same time, Iran in its Revolutionary Guard, which is stationed in great numbers in Syria, they would begin to launch their offensive against Israel. At the same time, King Jordan Abdul in Jordan, he would finally have to say, we have to go for it. He's not really for it, but he would have to because it's basically Jordan is overrun with the Muslim Brotherhood. Remember who the Muslim Brotherhood is? The offshoot of them? Hamas. Okay, they're also in Egypt. Okay, they then also could join in. West Bank is basically under control, but they still have hidden cells. I'm sure that they would make an attempt also. Right back to what Zachariah said. Play this out now. Think it through. Because what Zachariah said, that God is going to interrupt a war somehow, mysteriously through a divine intervention. Let me go over that again real quick with you, just so you got it. Um, excuse again, I'm out of order here in a way. And in that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open up mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and I will smite every horse and the people with blindness. Here's a bold statement of something that is actually going to take place. That sudden destruction in that day. It all just adds up. Keep putting this together. The scenarios, Israel, just recap. Israel, if, great if, but looking like Israel is in a hunt. He finds and knows whereabouts Senhar is. He's able to separate the hostages by the commotion created right now with this pinpoint uh, incursion into Rafa. Remember, this is only one little part of Rafa. Okay, so he finds them. Senwar knows it. He starts running and hiding, separating himself from the hostages enough that Israel would feel safe enough to pull a Saddam Hussein move and capture him, dead or alive, it won't matter. Then is it possible, just prior to that, maybe, because it's here in Scripture about some sort of a war that takes place and God protects Israel, divine intervention. Micah 1, three. God comes out of his place. Asaph, God do unto them. God makes an action to where whatever Israel is deciding to do that would bring about peace and safety, remember what Paul said, when they say peace and safety, they don't have to have it. But if it looks like to Iran, it's losing its second proxy power that is surrounding Israel and decides that it's going to do something against Israel, combining its efforts and I'm leaving out Yemen and the Houthis because that's an international problem. And so all of this is coming to a head, and that's the video today. Do you want me to recap that again for you? Okay, we have a scenario playing out that Israel is doing something out of the ordinary, which could be seen as the possibility of that three-month pause that they had a good idea where Sinwar is, and Israel has the problem of finding the hostages and no deal can be made. Well, Hamas won't go for that. No peace deal, no ceasefire. 
What does Israel have left? <clears throat> Even though it's bringing great condemnation against Israel, they're in Rafa, but it's pinpoint. If they find them, they separate them. Iran's going to say, that's not good. I'm losing that proxy. Engage Hezbollah. Engage Iran uh, in Syria, Golan Heights, etc. Uh, Jordan. God says, that's enough. It's time for me to step in. And you need not write unto you, because Paul said, you will know the season. I've given you a lot there to think about. Wrap all this up in your mind. Put this all together. You've got this scripture to go over yourself. And again, my blogging is going to bring all of this even more into light. And all the reads are a minute, maybe two minutes, but I just condense it and put it all together as an understandable way. I'll leave a link to my website down below. What's the, what are we waiting for? What, what's actually happening? It's the timing of our Heavenly Father. He is the one that actually, in that day, as he has described by Zechariah, is told by Micah 1.3, he comes out of his place, Asaph, Psalms 83, what he's going to do in the end result taking you all the way back again to Thessalonians 4, where Paul is talking specifically about the rapture, the harpazo, and goes on to tell you, but I need not have to write on to you, for you will know. That's basically a big circle, even though I've kind of covered it more than once. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope this is helpful. Just go over to my blog again, and I'm writing about this. And keeping up with it almost on a daily basis. Well, actually, I have been on a daily basis, even sometimes two blogs a day, to keep you informed as what's happening in Israel. In short, without you having to read tons of, of articles and listen to all kinds of videos to get all this stuff figured out. I should say news commentaries, not videos. News commentaries. And I put it all together and I summarize it for your approval. Go over there and see if it doesn't make sense. And also, hopefully, this was helpful in this video. Until the next video, Sunday, I would imagine, yes, uh, I'll come back and let's take it from there. But that's a lot for you to take in. But if you play it through, giving you the scriptures, it should begin to make sense. That is what Israel is doing today, where they're headed, what they're up to, following scripture, step by step. Good? Folks, ever so much, thank you. Thank you for all your help in my uh, website. That's much appreciated. And if you don't mind, if it's okay, Heavenly Father, in your Son's name, Jesus, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what it is that you're doing, and a special blessing to all of those that search, seek, ask for, and want wisdom and knowledge. Heavenly Father, that you said you would give it without rebuke. Thank you. For doing that, Heavenly Father. Amen. All right. Sunday. You also can contact me through chat, by the way, uh, in my um, website, <laughs> folks, until Sunday.